inverted fullback tactical analysis football channel. Here are some other examples of tactical analysis I've done in real life for teams that I've actually coached, just like this one. This one is going to be an example for Geisley that I produced on their build-up play. So a little bit of context before I go into the clips is, first of all, Geisley in white in this example were building up predominantly in a 4-3-3 slash 4-2-3-1 with the formations that they were playing. Some of the key themes that were noticeable and consistent throughout was the lack of depth from centre-backs. They were sort of pushed up a lot of the time, therefore not dropping to give themselves time and space, just to sort of either give themselves that time and space or to equally draw players in from lines one and two to create space for the midfield line. Equally, they would get trapped a lot of the time out wide or going along when it was unnecessary. And finally, the major point that I wanted to sort of bring up with the management team was the role of the number four, Alex Perger, who was called a great player, uh, he used to play for Leeds, and he was dropping in to make a back three, which was one of the principles of play at the time, but we were never getting him on the ball to utilise his playmaking ability, and some of the positions he was taking up meant they was unaccessible, or that the players weren't necessarily looking for him either, so it was really about how could he get on the ball more in between passing lanes, or how could he manipulate and move the opposition players in order to create freedom for others to be able to bring that ball out pressure free. Two clips are looking at depth and how easy it is for the opposition to get pressure on. But if you look here, if they all dropped as soon as there, they could draw the two strikers in, create an abundance of space between the lines one and two, where the midfielders could then move in sharp to hopefully receive. His body shape for receiving, first of all, not only this, but the depth. So if he was positioned five yards further back than what he currently is now, he'd be much more accessible and have time and space. Equally, you could have the goalkeeper who could play in between them here as a back three, but as he receives, the striker's not even working hard, but it's very easy to press all three of these players because of the close proximity. Equally, you should be looking for these little passes down the sides in between the lines here of a two pressing striker when you can't get on um, in between, especially as they have another player who can play as the pivot. Trapped out wide, bad body position, no link up play for a one touch inside pass. So in this clip here, Again, the positional. We've got numerical supremacy. It's arguable whether we've got qualitative, but we certainly don't have structural. So in this situation here, again, I'd be questioning Alex Perver's positioning. For me, he can drop in between to receive here in time and space to get on the ball and make things happen. And equally, he can go and position himself between the two playing strikers to try and receive between the lines or occupy the two strikers. But he's doing neither, so therefore he's not accessible. So we're building up with a, a minus one, in my opinion here. We should be potentially considering the depth situation here so I'm looking at Halsey our left centre back's position here he's in a 1v1 I'm happy for him to really manipulate the opposition play here in my would be my advice because he can move into the penalty area and draw this player in or become a free player and if he draws this player into these positions here again he's going to break and split the two strikers which is going to allow someone else to occupy the pivot space in here and be able to receive between the lines so we're creating our own passing lanes once the pass is played, I think Will Thornton here should be dropping down the sides of the sixth. So again, he, he can give himself time and space and plan better. We can see the striker that's pressing can occupy all three players here. Equally, the goalkeeper's got two options to receive down the sides or in central areas here. But again, likewise, Perver, if he wants to receive on the inside, could do and could receive here. So we have the ability to outplay because of numerical, but we haven't got the qualitative in that example I think the goalkeeper's decision making, I've flagged this up because it's happened two or three times where we're throwing into central midfield to players who can't control with back to play in tight situations. This is a really good example. It's good because we've got face up in central midfield and we're drawn and we've split the two strikers in early. We can now play through this first line of pressure or down the sides depending on what the preference is. So Perva could get on the ball in between the two strikers here. This is, again, just a suggestion, but uh, the positions that they're taking up, the central midfielders want to press Perva and they want to press Kingsley James. So what I'm going to recommend is that we start using these to greater advantage. Let's get them to start to move into these positions. I think the advantages of going into a more false fullback position for us would be, one, he can become a free player to get on the ball. Two, it's going to hopefully stop these players from closing off the passing lanes into here, into our 10s, 9s and 10s. 
But three, if he takes up this position, it's also going to give the wide player a problem. Is this player now going to be responsible for pressing in here? And in which case we can get a 2v1 in behind him. Or if he doesn't, as I mentioned, we get a, um, a free player. But any, as it is, this is probably one of our best examples of build-up play. Great play from Will, and we get the penalty from it. These last few clips are again looking at Perver's positioning, playing in between a 1 or 2. We want to get him on the ball, and he's not accessible. This is this should be the optimum decision here to play down the sides. We have a holding midfielder in here. But equally, if Perver goes in between the two strikers here, he can receive in this position. And if we move the opposition striker, which is the most likely scenario, then they now can't stop the switch of play to play across to the other side where we'd be able to bring the ball out freely. Yeah.